Excellent. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. My name is Gerard Leone. I'm a principal with the Leonardo Group, and I'm here with Richard. Howdy. And uh, today we want to talk about a um, topic that is very pressing these days, very important, and many folks are chipping in to help out in this current situation that we find ourselves in with the pandemic. And uh, we thought about, you know, helping out a little bit also, specifically with the topic of, um, let's call them homemade um, face masks. Um, we did some, uh, some research on the subject and we found some great videos with methods and, and qualities of, home, of homemade face, face masks. And we decided to use our expertise in the design of manufacturing lines and make a suggestion uh, to put together a line that can manufacture 100, 200 uh, face masks a day, probably primarily using volunteers. So that's the plan. It's going to be a, a mini course on mixed model line design, well, single model line design. And uh, the result will be a suggestion for a manufacturing line that you can set up together uh, as a team and build masks more productively so you can help out your local hospital. Okay, super. Well, let's, let's just get into it then. Uh, we will uh, share, we have a little uh, presentation for you. We're going to share that with you. And we've titled this, uh, we titled this Building Face Masks the Toyota Way. So what would Toyota do uh, theoretically with this challenge of, of wanting to build a whole bunch of face masks? And of course, what's typically done today uh, now is people will get the the way to do it, and there are literally hundreds of videos on YouTube now showing you all kinds of different styles. It's, it's quite amazing, overwhelming. But you pick one, and then you sit down, and you try to follow the steps, and you build a mask. Well, what if you wanted to build 10, 20, 30, 100, 200, 1,000, 10,000 masks? You probably wouldn't just have hundreds of people all sitting at their little sewing machines and making masks. You'd want to do it the way that companies like Toyota build cars, right, or build products, or like Henry Ford built the Model T Ford, because it's so much more efficient, really, to do it in an assembly line kind of fashion. So that's what we want to do, but we don't want to simply just throw things out there for your uh, experimentation. We want to design this cell or this line, this production line or assembly line, based on lean manufacturing principles, basically the way that Toyota or any leading company would design their production lines. So hope you enjoy it. This is going to be fun. It's been fun for us. It's a very simple example, by the way, but yeah. yeah. By the way, please put up with all the noises around. We are in our home offices, cooped up, so you're going to hear ding, you're going to hear dings and, and and dogs and stuff like that. So please put up with that. <laughs> and um, and by the way, this video is completely devoid of terminal of technical terminology. Our goal is to the, the way we thought about this was a group of volunteers getting together how do we organize this to make the highest possible number of high quality masks that we can so that is where we are so let's move on with um, the presentation okay so, what's the goal is to design and put together, physically put together, an assembly line that allows you to build face masks in a sequential manner and in the fastest possible way with the highest possible quality. Uh, now, we're calling it we're calling it DIY face masks, well, because we're, this is not an industrial setting, right? Uh, by the way, I just heard from a friend that runs a textile factory and they just got an order from the United States for 23 million masks. And it's going to be this type of mask. <laughs> so you know they're needed. So what's our goal? Also is to do it in the most effective way. So we're going to hear today a few uh, terms or a few ideas using this concept called lean manufacturing. It, which is another way of, of naming the Toyota production system. 
we wanted to make it scalable. We're going to give you a, a model to build 100 or 200 face masks, but then you can scale it up in increments of 100. Also, we're going to share some ideas on how to improve it and make it better, and um, then put it out into the world for everybody to see. Great. So you might ask yourself at this point, well, why would you want to do this? Uh, what, are, what are the benefits, in other words, of, of doing it this way? Because sure, you can sit down at a, at a sewing machine and, and make these and not get into all the, the uh, challenges of, of trying to create an assembly line. But there's some really powerful, strong reasons why you want to do this. And one of them, really important, is it's more efficient to do it this way. And if you have any doubt, just uh, ask Henry Ford or, or ask any of the leading manufacturers, what's more efficient? Have one person sit and build the whole product or create an assembly line? There's no question about it. And that's why that's how it's done. So uh, I think you'll appreciate uh, that statement uh, in, in a few minutes when we explain to you how this is going to work. But it's definitely, you can definitely expect an efficiency boost by doing it this way. So saying that, it means you can actually produce more face masks in the same amount of time with the same number of people than you could if everyone was working independently. So what else? When you work as a team on an assembly line, your quality is going to be better. And the reason for that is quite simple. If you build the whole mask and you make a mistake, chances are really good it's going to slip by. No one else is going to see it right, until the person using the mask tries to put it on and something's wrong with it. But if you work as a team, you have the chance to check each other. So that's, that's just common sense. The other thing that's really powerful is if you're working as a team on a line, then you can put your heads together. You know, uh, three heads is better than one. And you can come up with ways to improve that process uh, much more quickly than if you were just working on your own. So you can apply teamwork and apply brainstorming and really make what you're doing better and fix the problems that come up as well. So from that point of view, problems that, have, that occur are really valuable because they're a spotlight on things that can be improved. Another big point is that if you have people, and remember, this is, these are volunteers, probably. <laughs> these are not paid assembly workers for the most part, we're thinking. And so uh, if these are volunteers, then probably not everyone is trained, right? They don't have a lot of experience in doing this. So it's important to get them up to speed as quickly as possible. And by breaking the work into chunks, like you do in an assembly line, into pieces, uh, you can get people up to speed, get them really effective much more quickly than if you're asking them to know and get good at all the steps of building the face mask. And finally, you do have this piece of equipment that you're going to need called the sewing machine. And if you can build it on an assembly line, you're going to have much fewer machines that you're going to need to have to support that versus having a workstation where everyone has a sewing machine. So that you know, that, that can be a big uh, cost saver or, or advantage as well, uh, needing uh, less equipment. So a lot of good reasons why we want to do this. And one more reason is that it gives you an opportunity to, to build a sense of community around helping out your local hospital. All, of course, always uh, respecting the... Uh, social distancing measures that, that may be enforced at your location. Now, we are not going to presume that we're the experts in the, in the manufacturing of face masks. So we want to give all the credit to all the folks that we watch on YouTube and we learn from, in particular, this very nice lady, uh, Victoria Perot, or Perot, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. And uh, she, she put together an excellent video and the steps that we're about to share with you um, go directly to uh, her work and uh, the method that she is proposing. And we're gonna recommend a couple of improvements from there. Yeah, so, so thanks, Victoria. Victoria. Great, great job, Victoria, on your uh, YouTube videos, more than one, you have, uh, a number of them there. Great job, very clear, and in fact, so clear that we, uh, we, we took it on as a, as a template for, for the line that we're going to design. So thanks again. All right, so here we go. Uh, we need some data. So data is an important element in terms of designing this assembly line. 
And so we're going to set some goals and, and give you some numbers here that we're going to be using uh, to create this design. And one of the most important things is how ambitious do we want to be in terms of number of masks? Uh, how many masks per day do we want to be able to build? So that's our capacity goal. So we're going to create a couple scenarios uh, to share with you. Uh, simple scenarios. One is 100, building 100 masks per day. And the other is double that or 200 masks per day. And look at what those assembly lines would look like. Now, designing for 100 doesn't mean that's your limit because you can always just replicate that design and just have more than one of these lines. So if you need uh, 500 a day, you could have five of these, um, five of these cells or lines and get to that volume. So it's not a restriction on how many you can actually build per day. Uh, but for, from design purposes, it sets the limit for what that particular cell could do within a fixed amount of time. Um, also, we need to know how long, you know, how long do you want to work? So how long is your working day? That makes a big difference, treat, too. Treat your volunteers nicely, okay? <laughs> don't, don't keep them going for 12 hours. Right. So uh, that makes a huge difference because obviously if you work 24 hours straight, you're going to build more mass than, than if you work less, less time. So we've started with a, uh, a day, basically, a working day. Which, which includes time for lunch and breaks and meetings and taking some time off. But a normal working day is typically around 420 minutes. So we're using that. But you decide what kind of working day you want to set for your volunteers so they don't quit on you. <laughs> okay, so that's our, that's our starting point. How many uh, are we designing for and how long are we working? So then what do we need to do? Once we know how big we want this line to be, how long we can invest to do the work, we're assuming here a normal working day, people showing up for one full day worth of work, right? Then we need to figure out how to build the mask. What are the steps to build the mask? So we need to document those. One way, one good way to do that, and this is what we do when we design manufacturing lines, is we video the people that do the work and then deconstruct that video to identify each individual task and how long it, it, it takes. Well, we did that from Victoria. We watched the video. She was, she was uh, kind enough to not accelerate the video, speed it up. So it, it, all the times and all the tasks we, we documented from her video are right on the money. So we need to document all the work. Then we need to separate the work of people and the work of machines and the work they do together so we understand how many people we need, how many workstations we need, and how many machines we need. Now, because uh, we, we have people working here and people have needs, this is not an automated line, right? Uh, people have needs, like going to the bathroom, stopping for a, a, a sip of coffee or tea or whatever. We had an efficiency factor of 80%, which comes from experience this is 80 to 85 percent is our efficiency factor when we design real lines so after we documented all the steps and we showed them to you in a minute after we documented all the steps we identified identified nine and a quarter minutes worth of work of labor people work and five minutes a little more than five minutes worth of sewing machine time so we identify those two from all the steps. We will have all that documented. So with that, we're ready to do some calculations. <laughs> 